In this lesson, we're going to talk about variables and constants. Before we can start talking about variables and constants, we really need to talk about what data types that, that we will work with. So let's start talking about the kind of data that you'll use while programming. We have numeric data, we have Boolean data, and we have string data. With numeric data, there's usually, depending on the programming language, there can be a lot of different types. You can have signed, which allows you to have positive and negative numbers. You can have integers, which are whole numbers, like here, 42. An integer does not have a decimal point or any value after the decimal point. You can have a float, a floating point number or a real number. It's all the same thing, depending on the language that you're working with is what it's going to be called. But a float basically means that it has a decimal point and numbers after the decimal point. That's a float. And then you can have different, depending on the languages, you can have small or large floats with different names. But in our logic, we're basically going to be working with just the NUM, which is numeric data type, which will allow both integers and floats. Then you can also have booleans, which are true and false values. We'll get to those in a later chapter. And you'll have a string. A string is also considered to be an alphanumeric value because a string will let you have letters, it will ha let you have numbers and spaces. And something that you should be aware of, if you're working with a social security number, you might have a question of, should the social security number be a float or a string? Unless you're going to do some sort of math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, you should treat numbers as strings. You're never going to add a phone number. You're never going to add a zip code. Zip codes, phone numbers, social security numbers, so those should be treated as strings. That allows you, if you wish, to put in the hyphens in them, and that is the way that they're going to be treated as strings. So you can work with any of these three basic types of data. If you're working with something on its own, a number like this, if you're just using the number 42, that's considered to be a constant. It's an unnamed variable. 42, just as itself as a number, isn't going to change. When it's a variable, it will actually be assigned a name, and we'll talk about that in a minute. If it's something like Mary, in quotes, that's referred to as a string constant. The difference between a constant and a variable is that a constant does not have a name to it. We'll talk about variables next. Let's talk about variables. A lot of people have a problem understanding the concept of variables. When you're working with a computer, you often need to be able to have a value that's going to change. If you're going to have a value that changes, you usually assign a name to it. And this is where people start to get confused. What you're doing is you're allocating a spot in the computer memory. And what I like to tell people is to think of a post office. If you've ever been in a post office, you've seen the post office boxes that they can put mail into. That's sort of what you're doing is you're using a box or a reserved area and you're giving it a name so you know what it is. So if you're assigning variables, they might or might not be together in memory. But think of these spots as groups of memory address. Now the size, you'll notice they're not perfectly even. The size that's allocated for the memory depends on what you're going to be storing in it. Typically strings will allow you to store so much, ints will allow you to store so much, floats will allow you to store so much, but when you declare your variable, what it does is it reserves a place in memory and it assigns a name to it. So we'll say that these are blocks of memory. And if I want to store an integer, Typically, in most programs, I'm going to declare my integer, which is to assign a memory spot and give it a name. And you'll usually do that by declaring the type int and giving it a name. My number. By doing this, you have declared a variable named my number and you've assigned it to a spot in memory. Now the value that's stored in that memory spot can change, but anytime you refer to it, 
it will be referred to by my number. Now, some languages will do this for you, but it's often a good idea to initialize a variable. Because what happens if you don't initialize a variable, when you declare a spot in memory, it's probably already been used. And there can be, it's referred to as garbage, anything stored in that memory spot. So you want to set an initial value. Typically, you're going to initialize any numeric item typically to zero. Because that, you want to make sure it's clear. You want to make sure that there's a number stored in there. Because if you don't do that, and you try to multiply by my number, and my number has TARDIS as a word in there, tell, you can't multiply by a word. So therefore, you want to initialize it to something that's meaningful of the right data type. So you could, for depending on your language, you could do, be declaring an int. You could be declaring a num my number. Or, in some languages that are loosely typed, you just declare a ver, just a variable. And you don't have to initialize and set an initial value, but it's a good idea to be in the habit. The other type, common type of variable that you'll use frequently is a string. Now, you can get, depending on the language that you're working with, you're frequently going to work with strings, but strings aren't what's considered to be a primitive data type. A primitive data type would be a character, like the letter A. That would be a character type. If we were going to use this as a variable, it would say my character, and you would assign equals A. And normally, you end sentences in English with a period. You end sentences in programming in many languages with a semicolon. Not always, but commonly. So character is a single character. A string is alphanumeric. And it's usually in quotes in almost every language. Some will allow single quotes, but it's usually in quotes. And it allows spaces. It allows exclamation points, question marks, characters. And it allows numbers and letters. And so we would declare the string by saying it's a string, giving it a name that would res reserve a spot in memory for it. And we would assign an initial value to it. That would both declare and initialize our string, which again is a good idea. Let's talk about variable names. Because again, the difference between a variable and a constant is that a variable is a reserved spot in memory. The contents of that spot in memory can change. And you always refer, refer to it with a name. Typically, when you're naming variables, it's going to start with a letter. And the, the type of naming I'm going to use is called camelback notation. So I have a variable named my variable is cool. And you'll notice that each new word starts with a capital letter. The initial letter is lowercase, but then each new word starts with a capital letter. And there are some good general guidelines on variables. Generally, you're not going to use a lot of numbers in variables. There are sometimes it would make sense if you're going to use a year or reference a month or something like that. You might include it if it would make sense. But typically, it's going to be descriptive. Typically. You're going to have a noun or a combination of a noun and an adjective, and it should be pronounceable. You should not generally use a variable like this, I. Now, that is allowed. I is a completely acceptable variable because it's a letter, and there are cases where it's used. In fact, if you've heard of the language C++, it's because C is often used as a variable. You use C 
but typically only if you're doing a simple counter where you're incrementing something or you're doing a for loop. It's not a meaningful variable name. Usually i and c are counter values, that you're just adding something. If it's a variable that you're going to refer to a lot, it should have a meaningful name. That makes your program self-documenting, and that makes it much easier when you move forward. So it's way better to have a variable named total revenue rather than some number. Because if you were to come back and maintain your program in a year or so, total revenue will help remind you what's stored in there. Some number isn't going to. So you always need to think about maintaining a program when you're writing it. That means that you should put comments in, notes to yourself that aren't read to by the computer, explaining what's happening, and you should use meaningful variable names to help know what each name is. You generally should not use abbreviations because they mean different things in different languages. English is a common programming language, but lots of people who program in English don't actually know English. So while this would be perfectly appropriate in the United States, SSN stands for Social Security Number, that might not make sense in another country. You'd be better off spelling it out. Type more, don't go for abbreviated names, type a complete name because it makes the program self-documenting. There's another type of special variable called a named constant. A named constant isn't going to change its value while the program is running. Sometimes the named constant will never change at all. I've got two examples for you. If you're familiar with pi, which is used when calculating va uh, values for circles as far as radius, circumference, things like that, you have 3.14 as the value of pi. That's never going to change. Pi is always going to be the same. But it will be the same while you're running the program. So if you're using pi, you would usually name it pi in all caps. And it would be a value that you would not reset. Sometimes you'll actually de declare it as a constant. Another common constant would be sales tax. While sales tax can change, it's unlikely to change while you're calculating a purchase for a user. So sales tax will be the same the entire time that the program is running. So that would be considered a named constant. Named constants should be in all caps and you separate them with an underscore. And that's pretty much the same for every programming language.